What's up boys and girls, Marks here, Everything Ten Ray, and today we are going to look at a new skid plate. So I already have a GP Mucci Thor skid plate. Now I got a new version, so the 2023 uh, version of the Thor skid plate, which is a lot improved, some small changes, and a lot of coolness, I would say. So we're going to see what the differences are, uh, how the installation process uh, have changed a bit or the bracket systems and everything so let's get into it so let's start with just checking out the new skid plate so previously i have had the generation 2 gp Mucci thor skid plate this is more like generation 3 or 4 so the difference is, is that between my skid plate and this one, we got Euro 5. And so there was a Euro 5 specific uh, Generation 2 skid plate made, and also uh, what uh, GP Mucci called an air version, which had this really nice, a lot of venting areas in the front to allow more air to flow in through the motor or around the motor. Uh, now, this generation three or four as we can call which GP Mucci also calls the eagle or Thor eagle because it looks like an eagle from different angles right so that's pretty neat the difference now is that Euro 4 and Euro 5 have the same skid plate so this one or the new skid plate from 2023 will fit both Euro 4 and Euro 5 bikes so this is specific as well for the Tenre 700. So not the World Raid, only the T7, regular T7. So don't be confused if you have seen the older skid plates uh, that they had the Euro 4 and Euro 5 version. Now it's only one version and it will fit both Euro 4 and 5. So when looking at the construction and everything on this one, we will have a better closer look at it. So this is the plain version, so it's like bare aluminium. And uh, Paolo uses his new welding machine when, uh, when assembling these, so the welds are a bit better and it should be more sturdy than the old one. That's what I've been told anyway. So we will see about that. You know me, guys, I'm, I'm testing stuff to destruction. So I will show you a comparison with the old skid plate and this one as well and you pretty much will see how much I tortured the old one so let's start with the the construction of this one so I will move the camera closer so you will have a better view of it all so from the front you can see you know all the air intakes and uh, it looks really clean and nice the side profile have changed slightly and that we will see when we compare it to the, to the old one as well. From the inside, we have more welding on the inside here. And bigger welds uh, or more, maybe harder welds, I could say. We still have the shock absorbers that you actually get in the box that you have to put there. They have some sticky tape on them. You get the link arm protector, which is replaceable. So if you destroy one, I'm on my third on my old skid plate. You can always uh, buy more of them. I don't know if it's that much to look at underneath, but yeah, you can see the welds here as well on the, on the belly of the skid plate. No real difference here. Maybe a bit nicer, uh, the, the side stand protection uh, looks maybe a bit different from the old one. So I'll bring up the old one as well, so you will see it. It's very nice. Now when you have the plain one, it is not really sanded or treated in any way. You have, you know, the black one as well, and I think you have one more option. So there is a few things I will do to this before I even put it on the bike. And that is to put a mesh here. So I did that on the old skid plate. So if we pan over, you can see the old skid plate has a 
little mesh there. So this is just for uh, you know not getting these big rocks and gravel from going on gravel roads, uh, coming in and playing around under the belly of the motor, under the pan, and then you maybe hit some big rock underneath and you could crack your, your oil pan for sure. But also easier to clean out. If you get a lot of mud, it gets stuck there instead, so you can scrape it or wash it out really easy. So I will put in a, that mesh, will go everywhere here. And uh, I will also, because I do not have any new uh, decals for this one yet. I know that decal motor have uh, decal moto have got a template for the new skid plate, so they will make uh, you know the correct template for ordering uh, decals from them for the new skid plate as well. So this one has already been trashed a bit, <laughs> damages. So I will just put uh, like a carbon look-alike uh, kind of decal on the side. And, uh, and just stay with that until I change the decal kit on the T7. That will not happen until ne next season. So let's compare these two. So let's look at the differences between the different skid plates. So here's my first skid plate, uh, the Generation 2. You can see it's all battered up, very <laughs> lost its paint job, so to speak scratches everywhere it has been bent several times and whatnot i'll put that here so here's the new one and uh, i had to do a retake uh, you have some images here from it being pure blank now what i have added is some uh, like carbon fiber decals um, on the sides because i don't have the decal kit for it and also the mesh net on the inside I was supposed to ribbit this in place, but of course I couldn't find my ribbit gun. So I used zip ties and uh, yeah, it's gonna also be pinched by the bracket that you attach it to the bike with. So I think it's gonna be safe. Uh, hopefully no vibration and weird noises from it, but we'll see. I will, uh, you know, ribbit it in place when I get there or when I find the the ribbit gun so comparing these two just by putting them side to side ugh, this is hard so you can see the front here it's slight different contours so this protrudes a bit more forward because it needs to accommodate both you know euro 4 and euro 5 the bends are a bit different in the side plates and also the coverage or shape of it slightly different not a lot not a huge change but the air intake uh, and the angles up there uh, they are a bit more you know noticeable uh, the difference of it all underneath it same same pretty much uh, a bit improved maybe the protector uh, for the side stand uh, this was the first version that had the protector for the side stand. On the inside, nah, not a lot to see. Um, but yeah, I haven't added the link arm protector yet. So now we're going to install this ruck sucker on the bike. So I want to go through what you get in the box. So let's see what you get in the box. First of all, you get a gym bag. I don't know if everyone gets it, but I got a gym bag, so I'm happy. I can sport this when I go to the gym. Of course, you get the link arm protector. Uh, I actually got three because I asked for more. And yeah, you can buy this as spares if you crack it. Uh, and as I said before, I'm on my third on my old one. So yeah, I need them. You have the bracket. So this is the front bracket that sits here. And uh, I have my old bracket already on the bike here at the headers. So that one, and it's a bit more beefed up, thicker, more sturdy. So that's good. You have the 
belly pan or the support underneath, which is mounted uh, at the where you have the central stand pretty much underneath the bike. Underneath the cat here, or behind the cat, this actually goes down on where we have the link arm protector plastic. So it supports the skid plate, you know, from underneath, from, you know, shocks and so on. So it will not cave in and bend in if you really hit something hard. You have two different side mounting brackets. Uh, so these are the ones that sit like this here. This is for the wrong side. I don't know which one is for which. We will see that when I put this sucker on. And these are with a new feature. So it's a floating nut here uh, in this bracket. So it's, it will be easier to fit. And of course you have a lot of different bolts and nuts and uh, washers here. So The bolts that you attach these side brackets on, they use two washers, one locking washer and one regular flat washer. And you will put those in there. And then you have a spacer. So it looks like this. And yeah, you will replace the, the lower bolt that holds the subframe here with this one and attach the, the bracket on the bike. Very easy. Then you have cone head uh, bolts. You can see them here and cone head washers. And uh, so you have this washer. So this will protect the head from, you know, bashing or whatnot. And you have two different length, lengths of these bolts. I will show you a long one and a short one. So it looks like this, and the short one, it's two of those, they are used for the link arm protector, which is, do not use a cone head washer, but it has a countersunk, like cone shape, or countersunk hole from, from underneath the skid plate that goes up through the, through the link arm, and uh, then you have a nut and a washer on the other side. Of course, the stickers here, there's some more bolts in here, no worries. And if you want to attach, I'm not going to start with this front bracket, uh, which is orientated this way. And you use the OEM bolts that you have for your skid plate, uh, these dome style kind of uh, heads. And you know, you can use Loctite, Loctite if you want. I already had Loctite on my threads here, so I will not put any new Loctite on. Oh, wrong orientation, of course. Sorry for that, guys. This orientation looks much better. <laughs> you can pretty much only put it one way, right? So, so I will just thread that bolt in and then go to the other side and everything is pretty straightforward and of course before you put the skid plate on you need to attach your link arm protector and install the that uh, bracket that goes underneath where at the central stand attachment point as well the old one so if I take the old one, you can see that it's at least uh, like three centimeters more forward than the old one. This will be good for me, you know, <laughs> before I have hit the skid plate so hard on rocks and stumps, I actually got one of the screw heads touching the oil filter. So now it's more protected with the newer style uh, skid plate. So that's really good. Support and put in the new one. I don't think there is a difference in them, but yeah, I will do that anyways. If you want to see where this is mounted, I will show you guys. So here, between here. So this goes up like this. Underneath here, I don't know if it shows, it's really hard to focus the camera, 
and everything, but it sits there. And uh, the bolt is a 17 millimeter. And uh, I'm just gonna put that in now. I will not film it, but yeah, then you know where it goes. Now we're going to start putting the brackets in and this L-shape kind of bracket sits on the right side. Uh, the one that is a bit more bent is on the left side. So, locking washer, regular washer, bracket, and spacer, and the cops, or ambulance. <laughs> so you do that, you can uh, thread lock it a bit if you want. Uh, the whole point now is just to put it in there, tighten up the screw a bit, or I mean the bolt, but not completely. You know, it needs to be loose, but not too flimsy. So when we have done both sides here, then we can go over and uh, put the skid plate on and we will just tighten it slightly here in front and then we will just feed in the bolts here, tighten them a bit, you know, still loose and then have put in the bolts from underneath. Those are often the most trickier bolts to install because they are at an angle. So sometimes it re requires you to really fully tighten one side before you can really get the bolt in on the other side in the correct angle. So you don't mess up any threads in there. So I'll do the same on the other side and I'll come back. So bolts are in. Now we're just gonna put on the link protector uh, link arm protector So it's just this one sits here uh, a Washer and a nut on this side and the short cone head Bolt Goes through There we go And when this is sorted, we can put it onto the bike. So it's very simple installation. It's, it's not rocket science. Uh, and you cannot get the, the mounting brackets for the right and left side installed in the incorrect you know, position or on the wrong side because the left one is hid more underneath the, the fairing. So it's hard to get to. Just so you know. So now it's just putting this sucker on. So I'll prepare a few bolts and cone washers. So I'll start just putting it in here in the front. And I really don't need to worry about the sides as for now. Just trying to get this aligned a bit hard when you just have one hand available but it's in there that one is two there's that one so as I said before don't put any you know not a lot of force or don't tighten it tighten them fully the thing is you can put this install this now on this side here and before you tighten the bolt behind here to the frame uh, you tighten these bolts and the lower ones because that will move the skid plate a bit up and down so you're aware of that so you don't put this in and then just tighten this bolt the same here, you know, just thread it in a bit because we want, want to be able to adjust the, the mounting bracket. The thing is with the new skid plate is that the line with the fairings are a bit improved. Now this needs to come back a bit more, but 
you have a more even gap on the left and right side in between the fairing and the skid plate. I had a slight problem with that before, but that's how it is sometimes, especially when you crash your bike. I laid it down on this side really hard and actually bent the bracket that goes out to the fairing bolt here. So everything was pushed in a bit. So I tried to bend it out a bit. It's still not perfect. So this is pushed in slightly from, if you would check any other bike, it would be more out like this. But yeah, that's how it is. The bike is made for use. <laughs> So that's what I do. I will finish up the other bowls and uh, then I'll show you how it looks. So there we go guys. Jeep Muchi 2023 model Thor skid plate. All mounted, good to go. Everything is really secured. You know, my bike has been dropped so many times. This is out of alignment and everything, but yeah. Much more room here in the front, which is good. Um, and I really love the design, the flowing, everything. It really makes the covers and everything flow together. You get a little bit closer look as well. So, so let's check it out. So there we go. Get a closer look here on the skid plate. The right side mounting bracket got a bit outside. But that is due to that I squished the mesh net that I highly recommend that you installed between the front brackets. So that makes uh, you know the skid plate be a bit more forward than it should be. So I couldn't get it to fit really, but that's my fault. So I hope you enjoyed this little video looking at the new GP Muchi skid plate, the features, the build quality and everything. Uh, it's an awesome product. You know, I used the previous version one so I know that it will take a beating and I pretty much tested it to destruction and it's bomb proof even if I hit really big rocks you know everything with it and uh, tipped over so many times it saved my side fairings multiple times so it's pricey I know that uh, I know Paolo he's a great great dude and uh, you know if you have any issues he will support you fully and uh, you know reach out to them if you have any questions or ask down below please like and subscribe uh, take care cheerios and don't do anything stupid bye bye